was at the Louvre um, when I was about 15 with my mom. And it was before they put the pyramids in and you walked in in a different way into the Louvre, into this kind of elegant old entranceway. And you turned and there was this grand staircase that went up. And at the very top of the staircase was the Wings of Victory. And I saw it and I was just stunned by the exquisite nature of the piece, the, the elegance and the quiet yet dominant presence that it emanated throughout the whole building that, uh, that it was in. It was the only piece in that area. And my mom, who was also an artist, I remember turning to her specifically saying, that's it, mom, I wanna be a sculptor. First exhibit that I had actually was painting and sculpting. And um, the way I sculpt, which is the subtractionist method, where I, as if you work in stone, so, I take huge blocks of clay and I look for light and movement from shadows and until I see say a shoulder or the roundness of a hip or the tilt. And so then I'll start to pull away the clay and expose say a cheekbone or the line of the neck. And then I just keep pulling away pretty much the the shape is within the medium of whatever I'm using. When I'm sculpting, this would be a big block of clay. Let's say I saw this line or the tilt of this head. So I would start pulling it. And because I studied anatomy so much, right? And have a, that understanding, I can see the back without having to turn it. So then I would just pull this away. And if you slide your fingers along the pieces, you can feel uh, my fingers. And so then slowly, maybe halfway through the process, I might turn the piece, but really I'm sculpting like this. I'm pulling it off. And I know that's where the arm goes. This is where the back is. And then, I'll turn it to reference it, but I guess that's the gift that I was given that I can see three-dimensionally. So like when you see a box, I can see the back of the box without having to turn it. So then I can sculpt back here and then I'll turn it to check. So that was, when I was younger, that's what I practiced. That's what I honed my skills at was refining these infinite lines that connect to create this form and this plane and space without losing, say, the tenderness of the tilt of her head and his head. So that's, the, that's been my goal when I'm working. The trying to retain the essence of the emotion that was being emitted from the human person, whether it was a model or whether it was an abstract piece to retain the, the fragileness, the strength, the love, whatever was coming out of that piece to retain it within the line, within the shape, within the form. So when I sculpt and I'm, and I see the face or I see a gesture and it's conveying that kind of specific emotion that I'm seeing, then I never touch that area again. And I work from that area out. The mediums when we're working with bronze is learning how to not fight the metal and the metal process. So you're making a piece and that metal is gonna flow down and eventually create a bronze. So if you're making clay and you're creating something and that metal is bumping, 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 
you're not allowing the elegant process of bronze casting to come to its full fruition. It's so as you um, work with the pieces and as you learn to work with bronze, you can anticipate how the metal is going to flow. So when it's being cast, the bronze is actually upside down and the metal is flowing this way. So if you look at the pieces, you're going to see that nowhere on here did I design anything that's going to block that flow, that's going to fight that beautiful flow of the metal. It's that constant, my imagination wanting to do one thing, but really a partnership with the metal itself. And I think when you can capture that and do that, it, it becomes quite elegant. There's a, a, a simpleness to it that then allows the human mind to look at it and move forward without being jarred by anything. The, the palette in my paintings, um, they probably represent first my classical training. The, the paintings are created in the classical uh, Renaissance way of creating. Um, and also in the, in the paintings, you can see the fundamentals are very strong, that I spent the time studying perspective, studying anatomy and uh, color theory. And so all of those, I've used those tools to kind of hone down to the point where I feel like I've reached a point of confidence where, remember when I was saying, I don't have to turn the bronze to see the back. So I, the same has now happened with the paintings so that I can just make a stroke and with a paintbrush, a piece of charcoal and that knowledge and that training and time is now reflected in that line so that it gives me freedom to not have to think about the technical abilities because they're entrenched in my mind. So that eye to hand communication is so strong so that then my imagination is just free to create what it wants. Like the form in a two-dimensional two way, you, you draw your lines and the, you know, the lines are the same in this or in the um, bronze, but then you, you have to be able to see how the light would hit it as if it were three-dimensional. So like when you look at this painting, you can actually see through it. So the lines come through here and you can see the back of her shoulder. You can see her arm coming down even though his arm is coming across. And that I guess must be the way that I'm addressing the same process of how I see when I'm working in bronze, that I'm creating the forms. So it's, it's not a typical type of how to paint. It's really, I'm trying to show how I see so that you, so when you're looking at the pieces, you're brought into them and you understand the whole three-dimensional form that still exists, even though it's a two-dimensional plane. And, but the third element, like most painters will do that shadow and light back and forth, but what, I have fun playing with is the line, is retaining the lines. So like, if you look at the bronze, right? Well, you can see that strong line and that strong line. So then if I do the same thing in a painting, right? 
So if I just do that, right? It's just that natural flow, just like I would when I'm cutting into the clay. When I'm working in the clay, at a certain point, the, um, the bronzes and the abstract expressionistic pieces have the same anatomical correctness as um, the figurative pieces. And what I've done is I'll just take off a layer of the clay and smooth it down into the abstract. But on certain pieces I've combined, there's a piece called with my hands and it has an abstract piece coming out and then the figurative hands holding it like this. So most of the time I sculpt in the abstract way, but I also love sculpting in the figurative. But I think that you're right, a lot of artists do uh, transition from the uh, figurative into the abstract. And for me, I guess I've done that, but I still enjoy doing the figurative just as much. But the process of creation is the power of art. The actual process that an individual goes through when they are creating is the power of art. Whether your goal is to share that process, that magic time with the viewers, or whether it is within just yourself and you want to keep that process to yourself, the, the key to it, to me, is to make sure to listen to that guiding voice when you're in that creative process to try to filter out the voices that come in and tell you, oh, it's not good enough, or oh, I'm not doing this, or oh, it's not gonna sell, or oh, nobody's gonna like it. Or the other side, oh, it's perfect, oh, it's great, oh, it's fabulous. To find a balance within yourself and to celebrate the joy of the process of creating. And by doing that, that celebration, it will open pathways for you. If you, if you leave yourself vulnerable, if you expose your creative self out into the world, that the doors, the pathways, the process itself will carry you forward. But if you, if you allow all the voices to come in and influence that magical process that you go through by yourself when you're creating, then you will have a difficult time. But if you work on shutting them out, having an inner quiet, and enjoying that exciting freedom that comes when you make the broad stroke, when you put the color down, when you see something that, that drives you to want to make it, that that's what you want to listen to. That's what you want to focus on. That's what you want to train your mind to work with. Not all the this, that, and the other but that inner connection that you get with your imagination. And that's where an artist gets their real strength from.